I'm Matthew. You're VB Tutor. Today I've got a quick but powerful tutorial for you. If you've ever felt like you're writing too much code to do simple things, then this video is for you. We're looking at shorthand techniques in VBA that make your code faster to write, easier to read, and just plain cleaner. I know I usually emphasize fully declared code, and that's still the gold standard, but for quick scripts or one-off tools, these shorthands can save some serious time. And there are still plenty of times when these can be used in professional level code. Let's have a look at quick variable declarations. Normally when we write a string, you'd write this dim s name as string and you're right that's syntactically correct but when you start declaring lots of variables it gets really verbose you can do it like that or you could even just put them on one line something like this you can see how that quickly becomes really cumbersome and honestly it's quite tiring to write but did you know there's a shorthand for a lot of basic variable types here's what that looks like the dollar sign here is a type declaration character and it tells VBA this is a string, exactly the same as writing as string and it cuts down the characters to almost half. It's pretty neat, right? This comes from old basic syntax that VBA was built on and while it's a bit old school and not all that common, it still works just fine today. And yeah, you can do the same for other types too. So here we have a percent symbol for integers, an ampersand for the long, the caret symbol for the long long, an at symbol for the currency, the exclamation mark for the single, the hashtag for the double, and you'll notice that the variant has no shorthand symbol. That's because it's the default variable type in VBA. So if you don't specify a type, it's automatically a variant. That's a full list of type declarations. Honestly, for a lot of use cases, this will cover everything that you need. These type characters can also be used in function declarations as well, something like this. And you'll even see these in some built-in functions. If you've ever copied code from Stack Overflow or something, um, you might have seen something like this. That dollar sign at the end of left is forcing the result to come back as a string. Why does that matter? Well, if the first character of text was a number, say one, and our variable v is the variant, VBA might interpret it as a numeric one and not a string one. That could cause subtle bugs that are actually quite hard to trace. By using left dollar, you're telling VBA, nope, this must come back as a string. Now, if you don't know the difference between all these variable types, it's important to know the basics. So here's a quick table explaining each type. Most of the time in VBA, you'll be using long for whole numbers and double for decimals. They're fast, reliable, and work for almost everything. If you're dealing with money, currency is a great option because it avoids rounding errors, and single is handy for lightweight stuff like timers or animation logic. You can get into the weeds with types like integer or long long but honestly you probably won't need them unless you're doing something super specific. I know a lot of people like to use integer and you probably see it in a lot of online code but they're actually less efficient than a long type in 99% of cases so just use long. Anyway that's enough about variables let's move on to a technique that can instantly reduce the number of lines your code takes up. And I'm talking about colon notation. You can append almost any line of code by using a colon to separate the statements. I use this all the time and one of my favorite use cases is when I'm declaring and setting object variables all at once. Normally you'd have to write this on two separate lines but with this trick you can clean it up and keep the related logic grouped together. I also use this with user forms that have a lot of similar event handlers. Instead of repeating the logic in every controls event like this, I'll point them all to the same handler and often keep the handler call on one line. It's super concise and keeps your form code clean. Make sure you don't confuse this with comma when declaring multiple variables. That will give you an error in your declarations and I certainly have never done this before. Here's another great one. Square bracket notation for quickly referring to ranges. And I'll tie in worksheet code names here too because they kind of go hand in hand. I'm sure like me, you've groaned at having to type out something like this, or if you're working with name ranges, something like this. All of this just to get or set the value of a single cell. Let's break this down a bit. First, referencing a sheet like sheet one, 
depends on the user not renaming it. If they do, your code breaks, simple as that. Instead, use the worksheet's code name. The code name is represented to the left of the sheet object in the Project Explorer. If you want to change it, click on the worksheet in the Project Explorer and go to the Properties section. If you don't have this, just go to View and Properties window or just hit F4 and it will pop up somewhere. Then you can set the code name by just changing the value of this name option here to something like sheet test. This name is only used in the code. It doesn't change the sheet's visible name at all. Now, instead of this long winded line here, we can remove all of this and just replace it with sheet test. All right, nice, but we can still do better. Since value is the default property of a range, you can actually just get rid of that entirely. For my typical gold standard type coding, I usually leave the value in for clarity, but it's technically completely optional. This dot range here is still annoying me. So here's the good news. We can replace this with square bracket notation, just like this. And if you're working in the active sheet, you can just drop the worksheet reference entirely. Now you have a ridiculously simple way of referring to a range. Also, this is still technically a range object. So you can still call all the range functions from this. You can still do things like, like that. Or you can even do calculations with cells, something like this. Where you set the value of C1 equal to the combination of A1 plus B1. Now what about this name range here earlier? Well, if this name range is workbook scoped, which is the default, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's gonna be work, workbook scoped, then you can just do this. If it's worksheet scoped, if you go to the formula tab and go to name manager, you'll see here that you have either the scope as workbook, which is, as I said, the default, or my named range dot underscore worksheet, or you have the scope as just the sheet name. So if it's workbook scoped, then you can just do this. If it's worksheet scoped, then you'll just need to prefix it with the sheet code name like that. If you don't, it will just try and resolve the name on the active sheet, which might not be the one you're expecting. This combination of code names plus square bracket shorthand will clean up your VBA dramatically and it makes your references way more stable and easier to read. Next one we can have a look at is using worksheet functions directly in VBA. You might not even know this, but most of Excel's built-in formulas can be called from VBA. You need the maximum or minimum value of a range. VBA doesn't actually have a native max or min function, but Excel does, so let's just borrow them. Problem is it's typically quite lengthy to type out. Here's the standard way. It's long, clunky, and full of stuff you've probably mistyped three times already, but this actually works just fine. You just remove worksheet function, and then you can immediately call application.max. Heads up though, IntelliSense won't help you here. There's no drop down or autocomplete when you go with this route. If we remove this and type max, you'll notice that max isn't actually here as an option in the IntelliSense. And there's no drop down or autocomplete information when you open the brackets to tell you what you're doing. But it's totally valid and it does work. So you've just got to know what you're typing. And then you can combine this with our square bracket trick from earlier. And now you've got a nice small call to get the maximum value of a range. You can actually do this for tons of Excel functions. I use it regularly for count functions and to perform index match lookups without having to directly interact with the worksheet to do it. Let me know in the comments if you're team index match or team VLOOKUP and I'll tell you why you're wrong if it's VLOOKUP. All right, now let's talk about simplifying your if statements because let's be honest, they can be a bit verbose for what you're actually trying to do. Take this. Clean, sure, but that's a lot of vertical real estate for one simple check. And here I'm not talking about colon notation like before, it's even easier. Just remove the end if statement and put the remaining items on one line. It's that easy. And add additional actions to this using the colon operator from before. I often use something like this. That will then assign the missing value and then go to the error handler. Totally valid, but keep it tight. Don't go slapping five things on one line just because you can. Use this when you want clarity and conciseness, not chaos. Also, if you want an if else in a single line, you can. It's like this. Again, totally fine, just don't let it get unwieldy. You're trading structure for brevity, so be intentional about it. Another one you can use is the IIF statement. 
Sometimes when you want quick value decision, that's where this comes in. I always mentally say if when using this. This works great inside other expressions, like assigning a variable, returning from a function, or printing a value. But a huge warning here, if is not short circuiting, which means it always evaluates both sides of the condition, even the one it doesn't return. So be careful not to use it when one side might cause an error or call a slow function. All right, this last one isn't technically shorthand, but it's one of the best things you can do for your future self, breaking long strings across multiple lines. Have you ever had a big string variable that's so long that it runs way off the side of the screen? It happens. But when it does run off the side of the screen, it gets really annoying to read it or maintain it. Split the string over multiple lines using the ampersand and underscore to concatenate it. Just one thing to look out for here is to watch your spacing. Don't forget to include spaces at the end of a line or at the start of a line, otherwise the words will just jam together. Tip isn't just for strings. You can break anything across multiple lines with the line continuation character, the underscore. Long if statements or too many function parameters or anything else that starts running too far off the side, just break it up. Keep your code readable, not horizontal. And there you have it. Those are some of my favorite VBA shorthand tricks to help you write cleaner code faster. Got a favorite shortcut or a shorthand trick that I missed? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. If this helped you out, then hit that like button, subscribe for more VBA content, and I'll catch you in the next one. This is your VB Tutor signing out. Thank you.